Hi fellow camera geeks, Harv here and welcome back. Recently I've had quite a few questions about my audio setup for these videos because I don't use a very typical setup. So in this video I'll show you my mic setup and then what I do with the audio in editing to get it sounding crisp but full and fat, basically as good as possible. So my microphone is actually just placed just above the shot. If I bring it down, you can see it just here. There we go, peekaboo. There we go. And the mic that I prefer at the moment is the AKG C414, and it is simply my favorite mic in the world. It's not cheap and is designed more for high-end studio recording, but I use it because it sounds great, and I mean really great. The funny thing for me, um, having a music recording background and then making the transition into recording video, was finding out how popular Rode microphones are amongst videographers. I was amazed because the reputation that Rode products have with studio engineers is not that great to be honest. I mean maybe I'm being a little unfair, but I would say more bland, cheap entry level are more accurate, but they're certainly not considered pro. Uh, so I thought, you know, I've still got studio quality mics, so I'm gonna use them instead of going for something like a Rode NTG3 or something like that. Don't get me wrong, I like the Rode video mics and that kind of thing. They are good and they are excellent value for money. Now, to show you how I catch my audio, uh, just to be clear, my setup for this stage is certainly not necessary. You could easily record to an external recorder like a Zoom or Tascam. I do it this way because I still have some studio quality gear and it sounds lovely. The signal goes from my mic to my warm audio preamp. Of course, everything is linked below if you want to check out any of it. The purpose of a preamp, if you're not sure, is very basically to make a signal louder. They're in your zoom recorders, they're in your cameras, but they tend to be very cheap and nasty in those products. But when you spend some cash on a dedicated audio preamp, the effect on your audio quality can be significant. Uh, if I had to describe the effect of a great preamp, I'd say it can extract detail, make things sound fatter, warmer, buttery, more punchy, classy, and expensive. To put it, in perspective, for camera geeks like us, it would be a bit like going from the cheapest kit lens to a Zeiss Master Prime. After the signal hits my preamp, it goes then to my Midas desk, which looks pretty cool, but honestly just acts like an external sound card for my 2017 iMac. It's connected with Firewire, which I adapt to Thunderbolt, and then to USB-C. It's kind of a pain, but it works perfectly. The signal then goes into Logic X, and here's how I process the audio so it sounds kick ass. So, from within Logic, of course, absolutely every time I do a test recording to check that my levels are okay, check that I'm not peaking too high, and I'm recording to 24 bit WAV files, which are going to give me the highest quality. Once I film my video and I've got my audio recorded, the first thing I do is reach for my EQ. Now, there aren't any hard and fast rules with using EQ just make it sound as good as possible. I tend to cut out some low end, I notch out some nasty sounding frequencies in the middle and then I give it a little bit of boost to the top end to make it sparkle. It's really important to do your EQing first. If you do it last, you could run into problems. But next stage for me is to reach for my compressor and at the moment I really like H Comp from Waves. All it's doing is making the quiet bits louder and the loud bits quieter for a more uniform kind of level. And you can use any compressor, I just like this one, I like its functionality and I like the way it sounds. Just play around with the ratio and the threshold knobs and see what sounds best. If in doubt, try a preset. The last thing I do is I add a limiter, which is a little bit like a compressor. It basically lets you push your volume as high as you like without it clipping. The last plugin you saw was Slate Plugins FGX. It's amazing but expensive. This is the one I would choose if you're on a budget. It's tried and tested, it's pretty amazing, and it's called L2 from Waves. Of course, don't forget that your video editing software will have versions of all three of these. Obviously, I couldn't say how good they are, but they should get the job done. Lastly, we're just going to export the audio to chuck it into our video editing software. And of course, again, I recommend exporting at 24-bit Wave. 
and the reason we do that is to retain the highest quality. Think of it as the same as exporting a DNG out of Lightroom instead of just a basic JPEG. So there we have your audio and video and all you need to do is synchronize clips in Final Cut Pro. I'm sure there's a similar system in Adobe Premiere Pro. Just use the default settings and you'll be good to go. And there we go, nice loud sounding crisp audio. No audio editing in your video software? Yes please. So there we go, that's what I do with my audio. I just hope you found it helpful. I'll link the exact gear and plugins I've been using down in the description for you to check out. And thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I've made a huge amount of videos like this, so I'll pop a couple of particularly good ones just over here. And if you fancy sticking around and you're not already subscribed, then definitely do it. Hit the blob that I'll pop just here. And until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.